So we're back. This is the fourth video from the Natural Capital Plant Database. This is Dan Halsey. Welcome to Natural Capital. And in this video, we're going to look at the plant database that we have downloaded from the Excel spreadsheet. We left off with this list uh, in video three after our search and after we played with that list a little bit and then clicked on the export list button. This is the export that we get and last time uh, after it opened up I highlighted the top row and then made it boldface. I also went and selected columns and made those centered so like if where there's numbers usually I like to have those in the center of the column and keeps us gives us some white space in between. Um, and I also pulled down this second row just to give us some, some space between the column names um, and the data below. Now this was our search uh, for deciduous trees with edible food with a pH of 7 and clay soils in zone 3. So this is what we have and of course it hasn't been saved yet. So we're going to go up to uh, save and save that or you can do an Apple S and a Mac. Um, if you have a different version, you want to make sure that you translate this into the type that you're using. We're just going to pick a folder and save it. Uh, now it's saved in the downloads. Uh, it's saved in the downloads where it was with our changes. If we do a save as, at this point now it will ask us uh, where we want to put it and what we'd like to do with and call it. I'm going to put this in a folder. It's called uh, Gone in this case, uh, where I have some soil web survey information and other information for this specific task. And then up here in the title of the file, we're going to name this. Remember, I talked about this before. Is it's good to use in the name what your search parameters are, so you can kind of remember, and then make sure you put it in the folder that you need. But this list can be used other places. You can pull off this list if you have. If you know that these plants are clay soils and sun in zone three, that type of thing, um, and you're in that area again, you already have a list for that. So we're going to say uh, deciduous trees. It's kind of how I how I go with this in uh, zone three and pH seven clay. Right? Basically, that's for my search parameters for this particular one. And we'll save that. It will change the name. And now I know when I'm looking in my directory for something, deciduous trees, zone 3, pH 7, clay, food, that's what these are. And uh, there might be other ways of doing this. I know on PCs, you have one way of putting file names on. And actually, you know, they can't get too long, but if you try to keep your own little naming conventions uh, to a minimum, uh, you might be able to keep that keep that handy. Know that at any time you can go back on the plant database and make a new list and sometimes it's easier to do that than to find the list that you have so that you can customize the list for the type of site that you're on. So here we have the IDs of the plants. These are from the capital, natural capital plant database. We have uh, each plant and that's how we kind of keep track of them uh, with uh, different ID numbers. Uh, their common name here, what we call them. That changes, of course, regionally, internationally, but the scientific name is the one that you can always count on, count on being the same with the cultivar added to the end. These are all deciduous plants. We went through these columns uh, last time explaining what we have here. So we're starting to do our design work, and there's a couple things that we might want to do first. One is, if you had a number of different plant types in here, you would sort by plant type then you would sort by the spread so that when you're working you, it's easier to find the ones that have are narrower or wider as you're filling spaces in your design. If you're going to set, uh, sort always use the little diamond shape up here and select everything because we're sorting everything by a certain column. Go up to data and sort. We have row header clicked so that we'll not resort the row header but we can use that for what type of sorting we're doing and we want to sort the width or the spread of the plants in ascending order so smaller ones come first. And there you go. So the Harrelson apple has a spread of 10 feet, American plum 15 feet, 20 feet for the choke cherry, 
the birch, the maple, all the way up to the Kentucky coffee tree, box elder, black cherry that have a, a 50 foot spread. This is at maturity and these are in feet. Please remember that when you are working with trees and shrubs their sizes are in feet. If you're working with grasses and perennials um, and other annual plants they are in inches and that's just an industry standard. It's too hard to keep track of inches and feet in all of this uh, but suffice it to say that if you keep track of what type you're using you'll know what kind of increments we're wor working with here also. So getting these things in order, right? So when we're working with our designs and we're looking for certain spaces to fill we know that we have these trees to pick from for the certain parameters that we've done to go in any spaces that might show up here. Uh, going off to the right side a little bit too, let's go look at those ecological functions again. And remember that we want plants that have a lot of ecological functions for us. There's insectary, nitrogen fixer, a nurse plant, wildlife food, insectary, nitrogen fixer, reclamator, erosion control, probably has fibrous roots, reclamator, wildlife habitat, uh, fungicide, mulch maker, nurse plant, all of these are ecological functions that are now being installed into our design along with the human uses over here. And these human uses can be used as a parameter as we did. So everything that we have going in has some kind of food, either in the fruit or some other kind of harvest. Sometimes it's like an apple you're just going to pick and other times it's something from the roots or something that needs to be processed uh, in order to make it edible. So these are the plants that we have. Um, we have them in order of spread. Now another thing that you might do and I do often is to add another column. Say column A, we go on that and we ins insert a column and now we have a new column on the side. I use that column to do my plant selection. So if this list has hundreds of plants and I've had some with 150, 175 plants after we've done our initial search and combined a number of searches together, I'll go through really and start clicking and just filling in this column with the plants that I am choosing as I go down the list, the ones that I know I'm going to put in my design and in the landscape and the ones that are available. So American Plum, um, White Birch, Black Locust, say we have a Kentucky Coffee Tree, right? We're looking for uh, ecological services of that plant and the Black Locust. So there's some ecological functioning plants and also the ones we know are obviously going to have some kind of uh, food for us uh, that we can eat. And then once I've gone through the whole list and picked the plants that I'm going to use, I'm not removing the other plants, but I'm making those a priority. So now I can go back and sort and we'll use column A as our first sort. And these are already in order of uh, spread, but we'll use that anyway to make sure that we don't lose that. So first it goes by order of what we picked and then by order of spread. And we click OK. Now all the plants that we chose to work with are at the top by order of spread and that makes it a little bit easier for us to work with. And this would be in order of uh, plant type too. You could reorder this at having all your deciduous trees and your perennials uh, grouped together or even by size. So this is how we work with the spreadsheet. This is how we get organized. Using it for plant selection, using it for learning about the plants that we're putting in, also building our bloom time calendar uh, which we can see over here so we know when we'll have um, blooming throughout the season for the uh, nectaring uh, insects. So this is uh, one way to first start and use our plant database. I think it's very helpful to get organized and then you can print it out and go from there or also other things which I'll show you in the next video, some little helpful tools to help us keep organized. Thank you and for the Natural Capital Plant Database, Paula Westmoreland and myself appreciate your time and we'll talk to you soon.